we, we want to thank the community yeah. that's already starting now. Um, the uh, 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 pumpkin, what's his name? Oh, uh, <laughs> Petrified Pumpkins. Yeah, guys like that are really starting to get it going now. They're supporting right. us. It's fantastic to see people getting into it already. So Thank you so much. That was uh, Firewall Zero Hour. All, we're all looking forward to that when it's coming to PlayStation VR pretty soon. Uh, petrified Pumpkins. Yeah. Uh, petrified Pumpkins. Yeah. I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Really? People know me. Well, I'm very happy for you. Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here, back as promised to talk about the Firewall Zero Hour interview. There's some good news and bad news. So the bad news is that holy shit they still haven't given us a release date. But, and this is a big but here, the good news is that they gave me a shout out on the PlayStation at E3 livestream interview. But I mean that's only good news for me, I guess it's all bad news for you guys, lol. No, I'm just messing. There is some new stuff for us to talk about, but let's jump straight to the question we all had. What happened when Sid Schumann asked for a release date? Do we have any uh, updates on, on release timing? Uh, we can't say that yet, but it's very, 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 very soon. You, you, well, how about that? Okay, so they can't say, but Adam did say very, 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 very soon. That's five berries. That's an unprecedented amount of berries. So we have to ask ourselves this. If Adam knows this game is coming out very, 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 very soon, then why aren't they telling us? The following is all speculation, of course, but it sounds to me like it's something outside of their control. The most probable explanation being that they are waiting on a Peggy age rating. We know it's been rating in Australia over a month ago at this stage, got rated in America about a week or two weeks ago, but when I search the Peggy website for Firewall Zero Hour, I get zero results. Peggy is the European rating board, so there's a lot of countries, and some countries might be more strict than others and whatnot, so ratings in Europe can often take longer than in other parts of the globe. So maybe, just maybe, that is the reason. There was one other reason that entered my head just as I was preparing this video, and it is of course a very long shot and complete speculation on my part, but what if the reason they can't tell us the release days is because Firewall Zero Hour will be a free PS Plus title for July. Now I know, that's absolute crazy talk, but if it is going to release very, 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 very soon, then why isn't it on the PS Store available for me to pre-order right now? Isn't that a bit strange? I mean, I could pre-order Skyrim and Doom, and I could pre-order The Persistence right now, that's coming out in July, and a bunch of other PS Viewer games. But why not this PS Viewer exclusive AAA shooter? Sony used to give away PS Viewer games with PS Plus, but in recent months they seem to have stopped. But Firewall would be a great choice. At its heart, it's an online game, and an online game needs a solid player base to stay healthy. No better way to get the biggest possible player base than by having the game be a PS Plus title. Of course, I've gotten my hopes up before with wild speculation, so don't take that too seriously. It's just a slim chance, it's something that's on the back of my mind, just thought I'd bring it up, no harm. There is another option of course, perhaps the most obvious one, and most realistic one maybe, and it's that maybe the game is just not ready yet, but I don't know. Yes, they're still working on us, Hess Barber confirmed that in the interview, but they could be working on the day one patch or something like that. The way he said, the way that Adam said, very, 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 I'm sorry I keep saying it, but I have to stress the five varies soon. I mean, you don't just say that unless you know, but you can't say it, right? I mean, yeah. But anyway, it was a huge shock to me that we did not find the date today. Okay, so what about some new details? Well, they brought with them the exact same gameplay that they showed off at the Jeff Keighley interview. It's the same footage I analyzed in yesterday's video. However, we do see the parts that we missed yesterday because in that interview, the camera kept cutting from the full feed to the TV to Adam's face. So we did miss bits and pieces that we don't miss now. So I'm gonna go over them a little bit. We also get some new details from the interview itself with both Hess Barber 
and Adam Orth from First Contact Entertainment. I list the new details in order. So the first thing we learn is that the map that I have been calling Kill House all this time is officially called Shoot House. That is the first official map name we've got so far, I believe. Of course, please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. Sid Schumann, the PlayStation interviewer, says that this is the game that made him get the viewer, made him realize the potential of the device. Adam Orth then talks about the tactical decision making you'll be faced with in the game, using the example of a downed player. If they're your teammates, you're going to want to obviously revive them for that extra backup and firepower that can make all the difference in a game like this. But if you down an enemy, instead of just killing them right there, you can use them as base for his teammates to come along and try and revive him while you waste and ambush them or something like that. That's not exactly something new, but it's a nice bit of risk reward factor in the play in that particular scenario that sounds pretty interesting to me. Hess then talks about the importance of the death cam and how you can still communicate with your living teammates when you are dead. He says that each camera has a name. So for example, let's say one is called the main hallway or something like that. You could tell your living teammates that there's an enemy in the main hallway and give them you know some live real-time updates but what was really interesting is what Hess says next. So in the scenario where there is only one player left on each team it gets a bit crazy tense because each player has three guys covering all the camera angles for them so there's a very limited amount of places you could go without being spotted by these dead players. I can see one versus one situations being crazy, nail-bitingly stressful but you know in a good way. Later, Adam tells us that not only are there crypto pickups on the maps for players to find but there's also intel to collect. So I'm not too sure what benefits Intel will provide the player, it may just be an XP gain of some kind. But then he gives us an example of another tactical decision you have to make. Do you take the Intel and the cryptocurrency for yourself or do you plant C4 or mines or whatever for a greedy enemy to come along and die trying to get rich? It's a nice added layer of decision making to the game I think. He then goes on to say that even after you die, the mines and the stuff that you planted when you were alive, they remain a threat to the enemy. So you can still score some kills even after death which is pretty nice. So that's it for the interview details and it was a fairly nice dump of new information I think but let's check out the footage that we missed in yesterday's video. This is the first thing we missed right here it's a bit of an exchange between the player and the enemy. The enemy has placed what looks like C4 on the wall and the player gets around this by shooting us and exploding us. Interestingly the C4 has a red outline around us making it fairly easy to detect. Maybe a bit too easy. It could be possible that this could be the character's special ability or something like that because we see something similar in the next bit that we missed. Okay so we didn't really miss this one yesterday more so that the interview ended before this gameplay could be shown. So it's on the server room map and the player is creeping through these hallways here and this is where it ended yesterday but it continues here and we see something that made me laugh first of all when I saw it. It's like a, an enemy player down here in the distance just aiming at the ceiling. It's a pretty comical scene. The player engages in a firefight and he misses quite a lot of his shots I think. I feel like he's aiming from the hip maybe and maybe he should be using that red dot sight for better results. However, it's possible that he or she just likes to spray and pray. I'm not here to judge. We see the enemy has retreated to this room over here, but not before booby trapping the door and the room with two of those hockey puck looking devices, which we can now see were actually bombs or mines the whole time. So yesterday's theory that they might be motion sensors has been debunked, I think. Again, notice how the player is able to see the mine through the wall thanks to the red outline. That seems like a strange choice to me if it's not a special ability. But if it is a special ability, then that makes a bit more sense in my opinion. Let me know what you think down below. And that pretty much does it for me for this video, lads and ladies. I'm disappointed by the lack of a release date, to be honest today. But the shout out that I got from Hess and Adam at the end of this interview kind of took the sting out of the disappointment for me. It was definitely the highlights of my YouTube career so far. Even though they kind of got my name a little bit wrong, which I'm sure that they actually did that deliberately to make it look like, you know, that they're not mega fans, trying to make themselves look cool, you know? But we know better. Me and you, we know better. Okay, so that's it from me. I think my next video is going to be the overall look back at how the PSVR fared at E3 2018. 
my thoughts and concerns and all of that. Of course, if new firewall information comes my way, I'll be all over that like blue on denim. If you want to throw a bit of support my way, I'd appreciate it if you do all the usual shite. Despite my recent fame, I'm still a fairly small channel, so this would be a huge help. So thanks for watching and also thanks for sharing my vids and stuff like that because that's the real reason why I got that shout out today because ye lads helped spread my videos and made them visible. So thanks a million for that. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.